So my name's Louise Powell and I'm here to tell my story about what's happened in the past year about my daughter passing. Louise lost her baby prematurely in June last year, a loss forever etched on her mind and on her body. The first one that I got was a little handprint and with a date of birth and a name on it as well. And then also I've just got a, um, another one, which is obviously a clock with the time that she, she came out and that she was born and she died. And obviously with her initials as well. She's always with me. Baby Brooke wasn't born at home or in hospital, but in Louise's cell at Style Prison in Cheshire. The event made national news. Shockingly, she was the second baby to die in a woman's prison in England in less than a year. Now, for the first time, Louise is telling her story. I was let down and Brooke was let down by the people who were meant to look after us. So I just feel like it was a, a situation that could have been avoided if it was taken seriously enough. Louise was sent to style in March 2020 on an eight-month sentence after admitting common assault, racially aggravated harassment and criminal damage. It's her only spell in prison after a difficult time in her life. I wasn't in a very good place, um, just breakdown of a relationship and family. And I was drinking a lot, which, yeah, helped, well, to contribute to going to prison. I needed punishing, so, yeah, I felt like, yeah, it was the right thing to do for me. On her very first day, as she was being processed, Louise remembers being asked if she might be expecting a baby. I just said I, I wasn't pregnant, there was no chance, because I was, I was gay, so, yeah. Jane Ryan is Louise's lawyer. When women come into prison, it's a confusing time, it's busy. Um, staff are trying to understandably get people through. It's not an appropriate time to ask somebody about their sexual health history. Louise was asked, Are you, is there any chance you could be pregnant? She says no. There's no follow-up to that, although they were aware at that stage that she hadn't had a period um, for four to five months. In what is clearly a unique and troubling part of this story, Louise can't recall having consensual penetrative sex in the chaotic months before her sentence. The police later opened an investigation into a suspected assault, but Louise has decided not to pursue charges. So when she went into style, Louise was pregnant. By the 18th of June last year, she was living in a prison house inside the compound, and at around 5 p.m., she says she began complaining of a lot of pain. By six, it was becoming extreme, and just before seven, we're told her cellmate Bex informed staff that Louise was bleeding, having severe cramps, and hadn't had a period in months. A female officer came to see her. She said, for, for, you look six months pregnant. <laughs> um, yeah, they was, she was asking me if I was pregnant, to be fair. I, obviously, to me, I wasn't pregnant, I didn't have a clue, I, but I felt like I was dying. Um, she went back downstairs, left me in, in the cell. Newsnight's been told that on two occasions before eight o'clock, the officer contacted the on-site healthcare team about Louise's condition, raising concerns about pregnancy. No medical professional came to see her. By eight, Louise was getting desperate. So then I'd gone down there myself to speak to the officer that was in the office um, and I was in agony, I was crying, I was bent over and I was, to me, I was dying. I said to her, I need an ambulance, I'm dying. Um, then she told me to go and lie back down, go upstairs and lie down in the bed. Um, I'll call back over to the healthcare now. Louise was begging for help. She was begging for an ambulance and she was in excruciating pain. Steps should have been taken to help her. I couldn't make it to, to my bed. I got to the stairs, I, I like collapsed in pain. I got to the top of the stairs, collapsed again in pain. Obviously these were contractions as they were coming on now quicker. There's enough there to indicate that this was a medical emergency that needed to be responded to properly and it categorically was not responded to properly. Just after 8 p.m., we understand the officer radioed healthcare a third time. Still, no medical professional arrived. The officers come round to do checks. I was bent over, um, and my cellmate then was convinced I was in labour. She said, I've had four children. To me, she's in labour. Um, so this officer said she had to do the checks of the prison, do the count, um, and when she'd done the count of the prison, she'd come back. You're looking at the objective evidence of somebody that is bent over double, having timed waves of pain 
has a swollen stomach and hasn't had a period for six to seven months, all of that should have been a huge flag. Just after 9pm, we're told, more than two hours after Louise says staff had first been alerted, she reached a critical stage. And I said to Bex, I'm, I'm in pain, I said, you need to get on the bell. So then she pressed, pressed the emergency bell then, um, and I was on the toilet, I felt like I needed to push. Um, Bex was with me, she was holding my hand. Yeah, and um, then obviously I pushed, and the, baby, the baby's legs come out. Um, Louise says only now, with the baby in the risky breech position, did a prison nurse arrive. When the baby was already out, half out, the first nurse that I'd seen and the only nurse that I'd seen that day, she got me on the floor to try and get the rest of the baby out, the rest of Brooke out. I needed to stand up to, to obviously, because the baby was still stuck by her head, because she was, she was breech. Um, so as soon as I got up, a couple of, couple of seconds, and I pushed, and then she come out. Then an officer come and sat next to me. Uh, she told me I had a be beautiful baby girl. I was so sort of, it was just all crazy. I was I went into shock myself. They put me on oxygen, um, and then this officer went. Uh, then the nurse was coming checking me, and then this officer came back and she sat back with me and her face was different then. So I think that's the first point that I kind of knew that the baby didn't survive or she wasn't okay. Um, I don't blame anyone for the preg like knowing, not knowing I was pregnant because I didn't at the time. But the fact that nobody came over to look at me, the fact that nobody took me over to to see any healthcare, acute pain, abdominal pain could have been anything. Do you know what I mean? To me, I remember saying to them, I think I'm dying, I feel like I'm dying, I need an ambulance. So I feel like a lot more could have been done. Newsnight understands when staff did eventually try to call an ambulance, the prison radio system failed, which led to a further delay. Baby Brooke was still born at 30 to 32 weeks, weighing two and a half pounds. Nobody tried to revive the baby. Nobody tried CPR, none of the prison staff or healthcare staff. Um, and as soon as the ambulance got there, then they took the baby off the prison staff. The ambulance had asked, has anyone tried CPR? And they were just shocked, they wouldn't know. And then the ambulance tried CPR. Obviously it was too late then. Um, and yet then they took me to to the hospital, and that's where I found out that she died. Uh, yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh no, thanks. It's just, yeah. This was a tragedy that should not have happened. And what we know is that baby Brooke was premature, but she was healthy. And the evidence shows that had, she, had Louise been properly assessed, had she been taken to hospital, then Brooke could have survived, so she may have survived. And so that's huge and devastating for Louise to hear that. And it's also a matter of public concern that yet again, this has happened. Later this week, the prison ombudsman will publish her report into the birth and death of another baby nine months before Brooke died at HMP Bronzefield, west of London. In that case, the mother gave birth alone in her cell. The ombudsman is also separately investigating the events at Style. Prison is the punishment itself. Um, you still should be appropriately cared for. I mean, legally, she's entitled to the same standard of healthcare that she would expect in the community. So there should be no difference. The fact that um, two babies have died in prison cells in the UK in the 21st century is a disgrace. And from my perspective, it is a stain on all of us that we are allowing uh, the prison system to operate in a way where we're still detaining pregnant women without adequate safety procedures. And it, it simply can't be safe because we've had these two cases and it shouldn't happen. We went onto the prison, into the car park, and we just set off the, the fireworks and the balloons for her. And it was just really nice. I feel like it was the, the best thing I could have done for her, the first birthday. 
As Louise mourns Brooke, there are wider questions being asked about the government's strategy on prisons. The Ministry of Justice is creating 500 more places in women's prisons more generally. It believes custodial sentences should be the last resort for women who offend, but says it wants to improve conditions for those who do end up inside. There's growing opposition to the expansion, though. If they can proceed with those plans, it will simply mean that more women will be harmed and it is quite possible that there will be another death of a baby because of that. Brooke could have been here, like her skin was perfect, she was a perfect baby and she died due to error. Clearly they, they can't look after people, they don't take people's feelings and how into consideration, they're just, yeah, like I said, you're a number, not a person. You should be here with me, like, so it's hard to look back and, and see and know that she's not with me now and that's been taken away from me through no, no fault of my own, like, no choice of my own. So it's just, we'd never got listened to. Katie Razzle with that report. Now Newsnight approached the prison sentence for a response and a spokesperson described it as a deeply sad and distressing case and said, while our view remains that custody should be the last resort for most women, we've made significant improvement to support female offenders. Our new prison places will give them greater access to education, healthcare and employment, helping them to turn their backs on crime. We await the Prisons and Probation Ombudsman's report and will respond accordingly to improve the care for pregnant women and mothers in prison. It said there'd already been a range of improvements introduced in recent years. We also approached Spectrum Community Health, CIC, the healthcare provider in the prison. A spokesperson extended their deepest condolences to Ms Powell and said Spectrum Community Health, CIC, has fully cooperated with the independent investigation to this case, which was carried out by the Prisons and Probation Ombudsman. As the investigation report by the Prisons and Probation Ombudsman has yet to be published, we're unable to provide any further comment.